Okay. Mm, so okay. welcome everybody. Welcome everybody to our third session of this webinar series on asset management of underground infrastructure. My name is Bert Bossela. I'm scientific director of IKT and I am your moderator during this webinar. My colleague Thomas Brueggemann is organizing this session today and he will take care of the microphones and of any technical questions. So I'm very proud to be able to welcome today's main speaker. It is Olivier Thépot from Eau de Paris. Paris. That's the public services for water in Paris. Olivier is uh, responsible for the so-called MAC department, a very special department with a lot of expertise in condition assessment and rehabilitation of large diameter condensed sewers. And today, Olivier will give an overview of his broad theoretical and practical experience. And as Eau de Paris and IKT together are cooperating in developing these techniques further, I'm also happy to welcome Martin Liebscher. He is responsible for many of IKT's large-scale research projects and today he will present some live pictures from our testing hall. So let's be curious, there will be a lot to see and a lot to learn today. So Olivier, are you ready? Yes, yes, I am. Yes, you're ready. So, uh, so we can now pass the screen to Paris so you can continue. Yes, I will begin with a short presentation of uh, Eau de Paris, of course. Eau de Paris is a public company in charge of supplying the French capital with water. Um, uh, there is 2.2 million inhabitants in, in Paris, but uh, free for free. 0.1, excuse me, consumers, because we have some visitors in, during the day. Uh, the daily average consumption is of 500,000 cubic meter, uh, that is 160 liters per habitant and per day. And there are also 2,000 kilometers of pipes uh, inside city and 450 kilometers of aqueducts uh, outside Paris. Uh, which uh, brings uh, water from the spring or the plants to the to the reservoir in the, in Paris. So uh, the Mac department. Uh, the Mac department was created uh, in 1993 uh, with the main objective to assess the aqueducts of Paris, uh, the four uh, 450 kilometers of aqueducts. Uh, today, the, the MAC department of Haute Paris offers inspection services to the main public operators in France, Paris, Lyon, Bordeaux, and also abroad, like uh, Brussels. We, Brussels, we, we focus on main entry uh, conduits, mainly sewers, uh, with a minimum diameter of 1.5 meters to a maximum of 5 uh, meters. The, the MAC department uh, specializes in mechanical and non-destructive techniques and we developed uh, six patented devi testing devices. Uh, actually more than uh, 40 kilometers of conduits are tested every year with our patented testing devices. So the MAC department is 16 people and I will say 20 years experience it in structural diagnosis of large under underground conduits. So uh, one word about the, the, the French uh, conduits, uh, under, large underground conduits in France. Uh, in France, a large underground conduits uh, consists mostly of drainage galleries, in fact sewers as well as water main supply, the total length of main entry drainage galleries is about 30,000 kilometers. However, it's a vague estimation because uh, there is not a precise minimal dimension for main entry. Uh, the total length of large water pipes and aqueducts is about 5,000 uh, 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 kilometers. In Paris, uh, we have 2,400 kilometers of main entry uh, sewers and uh, 460 kilometers of, of main entry aqueducts. Uh, so, this is Paris. Um, large underground conduits present a huge variety of form and materials. The older, older ones are Roman type. Uh, with masonry using uh, dressed stones, as you can see here, 
Uh, this is, for example, a photo of the aqueduct which brings water in Versailles Castle, Versailles Gardens. The egg uh, shape appears at the middle of the 19th century. This shape, very well adapted for combined sewers, gives a good velocity for the dry reservoir flow and a large capacity for fluid time. Uh, this is some. There are some photos of Paris uh, Paris sewers. Uh, Conversely, uh, the common circular shape is well adapted to separate sewers or to aqueducts. It gives the most velocity of flow when full than any other shape. Here are some photos of the aqueducts which bring water in, in, in Paris. In fact, they are not exactly uh, circular. Um, Large underground conduits uh, are mostly frequently built uh, with masonry of stone as well as concrete. Uh, brick uh, is only used in north of France. It's common in Belgium, for example, uh, or even in, in Germany, but uh, in France it's only the, the north. In Paris area, the masonry is often made of millstone grit. Uh, it's Molière in, in French, uh, with cement. Uh, some example of uh, material, you can see concrete, it's built in, built in concrete, uh, concrete without reinforcement, uh, concrete with uh, reinforcement, of course, um, prefabricated concrete pipe, and even uh, arch segment lining for the most recent ones. So it's really very variable. Uh, the quality also is very variable. You can see some example of core samples. At the top, it's a masonry of millstone grit extract from a sewer in Paris, in the 16th district of Paris. You can see that the quality and, and the thickness is very variable. The quality decreases from the inside to the outside of the, of the wall. Uh, and uh, here there is many voice and lack of uh, cement. Huh? Uh, in the middle, uh, you can see concrete, uh, built, in, built in concrete, it's not reinforced uh, concrete. And uh, the quality is also very variable, it decreases from the inside to the outside. And here you can see many voice and lack of, of cement. You can see also some wood woodwork at the interface. And uh, below it's a reinforced concrete material extract from a prefabricated concrete pipe. And you can see a problem of corrosion. Uh, and last but not least, uh, the geolo geological environment may, var may vary abruptly along the path. And generally, in the transition zones, uh, you may have problems, cracks, for for example. Um, so I will finish uh, this short introduction um, with some pictures of the Paris uh, sewer network. In Paris, the sewer network uh, houses the drinking and the non-drinking uh, water mains. Uh, the non-drinking water is used to clean uh, the streets and the, and the pavement. Uh, you can see on the left the, the, um, the drinking uh, main um, drinking water, and on the left um, a non-drinking water main. Um, it's a combined system, so storm water combined with uh, sewerage. Uh, the, the sewer network is. 2,400 uh, uh, kilometer lengths. Uh, the sewer material are mainly uh, masonry, masonry of millstone uh, plus an internal thin layer of mortar. Uh, you can see some typical cross section. Uh, the elementary sewer on the left, uh, it's a simple egg shaped uh, sewer. Uh, a secondary, secondary sewer with a, um, a small channel and a, a small uh, path, a pathway, and a big, a big uh, main sewer. Uh, it's, a, it's a collector de la Bièvre in, in Paris. Uh, a main sewer with a big channel and two paths, and you can see also uh, a main uh, conduit uh, in, the, in, the, in the sewer. 
So, um, the classical approach recommended for assessment of uh, large conduits comprise the following step. Step zero, it's risk identification. Step one, a person entry uh, inspection. Person entry inspection uh, allows the gathering of first and detailed information about the defects. Step two, full line uh, test uh, full line testing with non destructive uh, technique like the mac uh, the mac test that i am going to present you further uh, full line uh, non destructive technique uh, is combined with local uh, destructive um, technique it's scoring in fact to assess the integrity of the pipe the pipe wall and surrounding soil support Full line uh, non destructive techniques enables the identification of homogene homogeneous zones and then the positioning uh, of material samples. Step, step three <laughs> structural and service condition rating based on the inspection data and the testing result. And step four uh, uh, rehabilitation action and definition of, uh, of rehabilitation. Uh, grounding and short crept uh, lining as a main rehabilitation techniques uh, used in, in France. And uh, to make sure that we receive a good quality of rehabilitation works, we can get back to the start to evaluate the, this quality again by comparing the result before and after work works. And for that, we can use uh, the, the MAC test, for example, non destructive test. So uh, now I, I present you the, the, the MAC test or the AMAC test, AMC Mechanical Assessment of con Conduits. It's very simple. In 1987, Eau de Paris was searching uh, for a system to assess its aqueducts, but neither of existing systems suit our requirements. We tried many geophysical uh, methods such as uh, radar, ultrasonic, impact echo, etc. So we decided to develop a new system based on a mechanical test. Uh, why mechanical? Because it's more practical, more reliable, and the interpretation is uh, easier. The first system was directly inspired from an in situ plate loading test used to characterize deformability of rock for the design of tunnel. The first system was quite EV and not very practical, so in 1992 we decided to develop a lighter system and then we carried out extensive tests in buried concrete pipe and in an egg-shaped masonry sewer especially built for the test. And then we developed an interpretation method based on finite element analysis. Uh, the MAC test was born, and today the MAC test is widely, widely used in France, uh, Paris, Lyon, Bordeaux, etc., and is recommended by the French Tunneling and Underground Space Society for the quality control of rehabilitation works. Uh, and actually, more than 40 kilometers of large conduits are tested every year with this technique in France. So the MAC test uh, is a, or MIC test, uh, is an internal jacking test which allows the measurement of the stiffness pipe solve system. The analysis of the measurement result based on finite element models allow to assess the soundness of the pipe and the compactness of the soil. The testing apparatus consists of a mechanical loaded system uh, including an hydraulic cylinder, you can see here the, the, the hydraulic cylinder, which can produce cyclical loads on two uh, bearing plates. A set of displacement captors, um, a data acquisition system, of course, and a trolley enabling, enabling the movement of the entire apparatus. The entire system is of variable geometry and can be adapted to all shapes of conduits. The minimum dimension uh, recommend are 1.5 meter height and I would say a maximum dimension of 4 to, to 5 meters. 
the total duration of the test, including installation, is about five minutes. So, and the tests are carry out, carried out at a regular interval every 10 on 10 meters. In normal condition, it's possible to test 500 meters of conduit per day. So, yes, this is a zoom of uh, of the system, you can see the hydraulic uh, cylinder and the, the, the bearing plate. And uh, also the main captor, uh, just just uh, just below, uh, just under the, above, pardon, the cylinder. And also the 3D, uh, the 3D captors. And the distance between the 3D captors and the main captors a captor, it's a 1.3 meters. So, uh, the internal jacking test causes uh, a three dimensional organization. Um, three continuous uh, measurements are made the force, of course, pushing on the bearing plates, the displacement measurement measured by the main displacement captors, okay and the displacement measured by the 3D uh, displacement captor. So the main displacement and the 3D. Uh, from this three measurement, we obtain, one obtain two graphs. You can see the force uh, versus the main displacement uh, and the 3D displacement versus the main displacement. And for the, this, from these two um, graphs, uh, one calculates two parameters. The stiffness, the global stiffness, it's simply the slope uh, of the force uh, main displacement curve. And the transmission ratio, it's sim simply the ratio between the, the 3D displacement and the main displacement. So we calculate only f two, uh, two parameters. Uh, some some uh, photos of the of the Mac test, uh, for example, in a sewer, in a concrete pipe. You can see in the reinforced concrete pipe, uh, in a Roman arch brick uh, conduit, and even in a ductile uh, iron pipe. Okay, so we can test many mat different materials and uh, many shapes. Um, so this is the result of full line MAC test in a sewer. The total length tested is 450 uh, meters. Firstly, the two parameters, in blue it's um, global stiffness and in red it's the transmission ratio, are treated statically to create zone. Uh, each zone is uh, characterized by its signatures, mean values of the stiffness and the transmission ratio, and then core samples are positioned. Okay. Um, the zoning effectively limits the number of material samples needed to determine the mechanical properties of the structure and the surrounding ground and assures that such sampling and material testing will be done only where necessary, uh, necessary and not by chance. Olivier, Olivier, just one yes. question. There were a lot of people yeah. on those pictures were uh, inspecting or taking these core samples. Are these, uh, is this external stuff or are they, these people are working uh, with Eau de Paris who are doing the measurements? No, we, we, don't, uh, we don't make the coring. <laughs> we don't make coring, but uh, uh, normally, you firstly, you do the uh, non-destructive test, MAC test, for example. Uh, we do a first analysis of the MAC test zoning, and after we uh, we we make the the coring. So it's not possible to to do the of course the, the, the non-destructive test and the coring uh, uh, in the same the same day, for example. Uh, uh, firstly, we do the um, firstly we do the, the non-destructive uh, test, uh, full line non-destructive test, and after after analysis, we do the the currents to. Fiber optics to 
to measure the deformation, you, you understand, of the during the works, uh, to be sure that uh, the deformation will be to limit it, okay? But uh, yes, it's uh, it's uh, in case of uh, of works uh, works near the near the, the aqueduct. For example, if you do a trench uh, near uh, the the aqueduct, or, uh, or, or if uh, a tunnel, for example, uh, pass through uh, under the uh, an aqueduct. We uh, we use uh, captors and uh, and um, optic fibers, yes, to to um, to survey to survey the the aqueduct, yes. I continue. So uh, yes, knowing the, the geometry of the sewer, it's possible to back calculate the, the modulus of the soil and the modulus uh, of the structure. Uh, we, we use a finite element uh, a model uh, to fit analytical expression for the human modulus of the structure and the human modulus of the soil, function of the global stiffness and the transmission ratio. And this analytical expression are, are calculated for each shape. So, um, uh, a structural quality index equal to the ratio uh, of the calculated modulus to the expected modulus of the material in good condition is calculated. If the quality index is less than 0 0.1, the material is obvi obviously in bad or very bad condition. If the quality index is less than 0 0.3 uh, and superior to 0 0.1, the material condition is average. And uh, if uh, the quality index is superior to 0 0.3, the material condition is fair or quite good. There are the, the rating rules we use for. Uh, and also, uh, the modulus of the soil, it's very sensitive to the compactness of the soil and the quality of the contact. So for a sandy soil, for example, if the a, a micro modulus is less than 50 megapascal, the soil is soft. If the micro modulus is about to 200, the soil is compact or hard. So finally, uh, each each zone is characterized um, is, is characterized by the mean values of the quality index of the structure and uh, the mean values of the soil modulus. And each zone is classified as three levels uh, for the structure and the soil. So it's a it's the end of the of the assessment. So one years one year ago, EDP and ICATIS uh, signed a cooperation agreement about the, the MAX system. Eau de Paris offer access to its know-how on the MAC device to IKT, and IKT develops a new MAC device suited for pipe of a diameter below 1.5 meters, with a range of diameter not being covered by the Eau de Paris MAC device. The development is totally of, over to Eau de Paris, which can benefit from all uh, the new development. So thus, it's a win-win uh, cooperation uh, for France via uh, Eau de Paris and Germany uh, via And with regard to asset management and to, to get the funding, the budget for rehabilitation works, does it help you to to, to get the, the budget to justify uh, money oh, yeah. to be spent on the network? Or how does it go? Is it only for engineers, only for special specialists that they value the results? No, it's not only for, for, for us, for, but it's, of course, it's uh, for to, to, to decide uh, uh, because it's uh, it's very expensive, for, of course. It's uh, uh, I think that the uh, it's twenty no two two thousand euros per meter. Uh, it's um, an order of magnitude for the the cost of uh, rehabilitation. 
So, uh, for example, 500 meters, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, one millions, <laughs> it's one millions uh, euros. So, uh, no, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very important to, to, um, for, for the, the budget, of course. Okay, thank you. As we have seen, it's a, it's a very, very uh, good device, which was already developed in France. Uh, they have a lot of experience there, how to, to work with it. Uh, but there are three goals for our testing device, uh, which you can see here on this slide. The first one was that we want to uh, develop a semi-automatic device to make it a bit quicker to use it, and also to allow it to go into um, a smaller shape. Uh, sewers so that it will be applicable for diameters uh, from 800 millimeters and larger and wireless data tr transmission is a keyword but it's not up to me to show you uh, the new device of the developments but to Martin Nietzsche and I'm glad that we have him there in the testing hall um, here at IKT so Martin you can hear us yes I can hear you and then Martin can tell us something about what's going on in our IKT testing hall please Martin Hello, thank you, Bert. Hello, my name is Marte Liebscher, and I'll show you something about the development concerning the MAX system that we have done here at IKT. Here you see the test pipe, but first of all, before we can start with this uh, short demonstration, I will give you a short overview of our testing hall. I think this is also very interesting. Therefore, we have to change the camera. Ah, I see the second cam is coming. Now we have uh, an overview of our testing hall. Um, this now is our strong floor. Here we can test components of sewers, like pipes or shafts on mechanical strength with loads up to 400 tons. In our large format test stand, it is possible to have a look at the pipe-soil interaction in one-to-one -one scale. It is 6 meters high, 6 meters wide, and 15 meters long. It can be filled with soil also, and also water to stimulate groundwater levels. At least to test, to test systems in a smaller dimension, we have a container test stand. In the background, you can see our MAC test stand. I will show you I'm here, and now we will turn on the camera here at our test stand, and I will show you something about our MAC system. But now have a look at our little Mac, so we called it. Our task was to develop a test unit for sewers with smaller diameter, still accessible by man. To fit to the German sewers, the minimum cross-section was fixed to an egg profile sewer 1.2 meters high and 0.8 meters wide, as you can see it here. The system itself can be moved on wheels, and the whole testing process can be done half automatic. Here you can see the system moving to the to the test point. It is possible to adjust the position of load transmission electrically because it's very important to to measure at the same time in uh, in the same position when you make the test along the pipe. After fixing the load transmission unit, uh, this means the unit has to be fixed to the walls with a little bit of uh, pressure. I don't know if you hear the, the, the sound of our electric motor. Now it's done. And then the unit is disconnected from the Mac by moving the bearing of the, of the, of the cylinder down. This is very important because uh, you have to disconnect the cylinder from the MAC system itself to have uh, good measurements. To simplify the handling in small sewers, the transmission of measured data is completely wireless. So it is very easy to assemble and disassemble the test unit in case of smaller manholes. And it is possible to fix the measuring gorges for horizontal deformation without any cable connection. Here the measuring gorges are, are mounted in the pipe. We need one in the area of the load transmission in the middle and one uh, behind and one in front. 
to measure with the system. In practice, only, uh, oh, I will see, this small unit is needed to uh, do the measuring in the sewer. So you don't have to carry a laptop with you. So it is very uh, good for the tester in, in the pipe. In addition, it is possible to transmit data to the surface for further calculation. Now we have to change the camera to our laptop of the Mac system. Here you can see the control surface of our software application. The upper part of the diagram you see on the left side, there are two diagrams. The upper part displays uh, the displacement of the sewer in the three points we have mentioned. And the lower part contains the applied load. Normally we make three tests at each measuring point. And now we have a look at the testing procedure. It is very quick. You hear the system, I don't know. It's an hydraulic system. The load is applied. You can see it on the monitor. The lower part is for the load. This in, uh, increases. And the upper part is for the displacements in the three points. And there you can see uh, that there are different displacements Logic logically, because we have different uh, measuring places. Perhaps I should mention uh, that this is a reinforced concrete pipe, uh, so it's very uh, important for us uh, because uh, we have no embedding uh, around the pipe, so uh, when it is not reinforced it would, could break by, by mishandle. So I think this is the third test, am I right? Mm -hmm. So now we have uh, made three tests. These tests are used to, to have a look at the simultaneously measurement uh, so that the test is uh, more, uh, you get more uh, better results when you test three times. After the test, the unit can be moved to the next measuring point. Therefore, the load transmission has to be supported and we have to unfix the measuring gauges. My colleague has unfixed the measuring gauges, then he moves the support of the hydraulic cylinder. This one also has to, and then uh, the load from the cylinder is getting down. And uh, after this is done, we can move our MAC system to the next measuring point. The cylinder don't want to, to leave his load. <laughs> Ah, now, now it comes. So we can change to the to the monitor uh, to the pipe, so that you can see after we have uh, changed, you can move the system. We have six wheels under the system. This is because when you have damage in a pipe, there is a hole or something. Uh, then uh, we can move the system over these holes, and uh, it's no problem to get to the next measuring point. Now you have an overview concerning our development. By now, we are ready for testing in praxis. So, Wim Bonte from Aquafin in Belgium. So we're happy to, to have you here again and a question, please. Thank you. Okay. Um, all sewers uh, seem to be very, very well cleaned. Is this necessary for uh, this device? And a uh, second question is, is this device explosion-free to use in uh, sewers? Uh, 
the first question. Uh, it is necessary to clean the sewer, not uh, not very clean, but we have to move the system, so uh, it should be cleaned. Um, there could be a less water in the pipe that is not uh, so. Uh, this is possible, up to 20, 25 centimeters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last question was uh, explosion free. No, uh, this system is uh, not tested on uh, explosion. So uh, you have to, to get air into the pipe to, uh, to minimize the risk of explosion. Mm -hmm. But normally uh, a person is uh, with the system, so uh, it would be also necessary to to avoid explosion in a, in the pipe. So thank you very uh, much yes. for this presentation, and uh, we can now switch back to Olivier Telpo to Paris, and we can continue yes. with more practical examples from Paris because uh, this system or the larger system, you are already using it for for years, for more than ten years, and there's a lot of experience in the evaluation also of mm -hmm. rehabilitation works, and we are very curious to hear about this. So you can share the camera, and I give you the screen. So in this second part, I will present some case studies and the application of the MAC test uh, to quality assurance. Uh, assessment of rehabilitation works. Um, yes, this is a, an example, uh, a result of, of a MAC test in H-shaped uh, H sewers uh, with various material qualities. Uh, the stiffness, the global stiffness, is very sensible to the material quality and there is a huge contrast of stiffness uh, between a good concrete material, you can see on the, on the left, uh, uh, and uh, a poor masonry, you can see uh, on, on the right, uh, with uh, with many voice. Uh, of course, when you are inside uh, the sewer, uh, you can you can see, you cannot see. You, you see only the, the thin layer here yeah, of uh, of mortar, but it's impossible to guess what you are, uh, what you have behind this, uh, this thin layer of, of mortar. And, uh, so you can see that there is a really uh, a huge, it's easy to detect uh, poor masonry with, uh, with this test. I will say that with a radar system it's not so obvious. <laughs> it's not so obvious. Uh, second example, uh, the MAC system is also uh, very sensible to the thickness uh, of the structure. Uh, this is this is a, a result on the, of the MAC test in the, on the left in the concrete uh, egg shaped pipe, uh, prefabricated concrete pipe uh, on the left, and on the right it's uh, it's also concrete but it's not prefabricated. It's in situ. Uh, in situ uh, built uh, concrete pipe. So you can see that there is also a, a huge contrast of uh, stiffness. Uh, so the, the stiffness is very sensible to the thickness and the quality uh, of, the, of the masonry. Uh, another example, it's an interesting case study. It's a neck shaped sewer uh, made of masonry in a sandy soil environment, so you can see uh, the in, in, bl in uh, blue it's a um, is a stiffness, and in red it's a transmission ratio. So you can see that there is a weak zone uh, in the central uh, area, and uh, this is a calculation of the quality index. So you can see that the quality index is very low; it's uh, less than zero point. 0 0.1 in the central area, and uh, you can see also the the implementation of the the, the scores. Yeah. Okay, so free we we implant uh, free scores, and this is the results. Okay, so uh, in the central area we have a masonry with many voids and a lack of uh, cement. Uh, but you have to understand that inside the, the sewer, you, you, it's impossible to, to
to, to of course to have uh, to to imagine that uh, you have a, a variability uh, in, uh, between uh, um, between on the on the right you have a, a, a good masonry and in the central area is really very very low very bad um, and uh, yes this is the result of the uh, of the, of the modulus of the soil, and you can see that the, the soil is compact. Uh, the, the modulus is uh, is uh, really good. Uh, uh, on the entire, uh, entire uh, okay. So this is the result of Olivier, the thing. Yes, Olivier. I think there's a question from Wim Bonte, please, Wim. Okay. Yes, um, yes. In this uh, bad, in this bad zones, uh, bad areas of the sewer, have you always uh, have you also seen uh, some structural um, uh, problems with uh, the masonry? Some which you can see on the uh, on visual inspections, like a CCTV standard CCTV, um, like missing masonry, uh, missing bricks. Uh, Ah yes, um, yes. Uh, uh, of course, uh, before um, non-destructive technique, we do inspection, and uh, but uh, uh, there is n n no automatic correlation between what you what what you see during the inspection and the result of the of the MAC test. For example, in this case, uh, there were not a difference between uh, the central uh, zone, this zone. Uh, visually speaking, uh, it was impossible to to guess that the, the material was uh, so so poor. You understand? So. Uh, um, I will say that CCTV or camera or etc. Uh, it's of course it's necessary to to do a visual inspection, of course, but it's not enough. Uh, it's not enough because uh, uh, the quality of the in this case, for example, uh, you 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 can see that the there is a thin layer of mortar uh, uh, in good quality inside the inside the. The, the sewer, uh, but uh, behind this uh, good uh, thin layer of mortar, the, the quality of, of the masonry is really very, very bad. So it's it's impossible to see uh, <laughs> that uh, with uh, CCTV or, uh, or visual in inspection. You need to to use uh, uh, non-destructive techniques and. Uh, the MAC test is really very uh, uh, efficient for to detect uh, this kind of problems. Uh, did you ever excavate a pipe? So, for example, uh, you oh, yes. pl you planned uh, you planned uh, to renew a pipe anyway, but uh, before excavating, you just tested your testing device by trying to uh, predict what you will find when you are going to excavate. Did you ever do this? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we uh, we did a test before, of course, before excavating, and uh, and after we we um, um, yes we excavate uh, the pipe to to compare the the uh, and we we do a test after excavating to to compare the 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 stiffness the calculated stiffness to. Uh, uh, yes, yes, we, we we do that. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Uh, so the reason of the of the of the the rating was uh, uh, a masonry uh, very bad quality uh, from uh, manhole three to to seven, for example, and a uh, soil. Uh, in very good condition. Of course, you you can have uh, a masonry in good quality in uh, inverse uh, conversely 
in a in a soft soil. It's also possible. You have the okay. So another example. Uh, it's a sulfate, uh, sulfatic or sulfate attack of a reinforced concrete sewer. Um, it's always very uh, very impressive. Uh, but the question is, what is the depth of the sulfate attack? What is the left uh, thickness? What about the stability? What is the remaining safety? Do I have to rebuild the sewer? Of course, it's uh, the question. So uh, in this case, we, we did a, a, a max test and also uh, core dry links. Um, so this is the result of the MAC test. In blue, it's uh, global stiffness, and in, in red, the transmission ratio. The transmission ratio, it's 40%. Uh, in, in concrete pipes, the uh, transmission ratio is uh, uh, it's typically 30 to 40, uh, 30 to 40%. It's, uh, it's high. So uh, this is uh, the implementation of uh, Course scoring, okay, and the result. Uh, so twenty, the, the, the concrete is um, the quality of concrete was good. Uh, the thickness here it's uh, twenty twenty centimeters uh, to to thirty centimeters, and we compare the the, the stiffness to uh, the stiffness of. Uh, uh, um, a pipe in, in good uh, good quality uh, with a thickness of 20 centimeters 20, 20 centimeters it's a uh, normal stiffness of the pipe 25 no, 20 it's uh, in green 25 and 30 centimeters in red so we can see that 30% uh, of the of the stiffness is superior to the Stiffness calculated for a thickness of uh, 20 centimeters. The conclusion was that uh, um, the pipe is structurally safe and does not need to be rebuilt. It's uh, the first conclusion. Uh, we propose rehabilitation works, uh, hydro cleaning with very high pressure water and shot crating. Okay, and the cost, the cost of rehabilitation works. Uh, was uh, 700 kilo euros. Um, the cost of diagnosis two, uh, 228 uh, kilo euros, 40% uh, of the rehabilitation works, 4%. Uh, uh, and the cost of reconstruction uh, it was more than 2,000 uh, kilo euros. So uh, it's uh, it's interesting to do uh, to do uh, diagnosis. You, know, you you can uh, uh, win many many. Uh, um. So um, yes, um, I will um, another another very interesting application of the MAC test is quality uh, insurance. Assessment of rehabilitation works and the uh, soil grunting uh, is a very efficient technique for the rehabilitation of masonry sewers. It is widely used in France. 90% of rehabilitation works use contact uh, grunting. So the, the ground is injecting uh, near the interface between the soil and the masonry. Uh, the ground can uh, fill voids in the soil and also in the masonry, improving material resistance and stiffness. The efficiency of the grounding is judged by the increase of material modulus and soil modulus. So uh, I will say a word about the, the importance of soil support. Accident of a floor uh, can badly damage a sewer. Uh, Non-circular shape is far more sensitive than circular. The so inner water pressure creates tensile strain and stress also in the structure, which can lead to cracks, uh, water leaking, and a voice formation in the surrounding soil. And the soil structure interaction can significantly reduce 
the tensile stress in the structure because of the high modulus of the soil at uh, small strain. For example, in the case of a masonry in bad condition, the maximal tensile stress may be divided by 10 in a compact soil in comparison with a, a soft soil, for example. It's a, it's a green, the red, uh, the red curve you can see here. So it's the interaction, the soil structure interaction is very important for masonry uh, because masonry uh, don't support tensile stress. And uh, so it's very important to measure the, the modulus of the, of the soil. Uh, if you increase uh, the soil stiffness, for example, by mean of grunting, you increase the resistance and the stability of the masonry. Okay. So um, this graph shows the evolution of the global stiffness curve before in, in red and after a uh, soil uh, grunting. Uh, so we, we do we do test before works and after works. And you can see that it's very very impressive. Uh, the increase of the global stiffness is, is very important. Uh, in this case, the global stiffness has been multiplied by 2.5. Uh, and you can easily judge uh, the homogeneity and the efficiency uh, of the work. Uh, I think that it's the only way to, 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 to judge. Uh, it's not obvious to, to, uh, to judge uh, soil grounding because you, you don't see the, the ground uh, and uh, with this test, you can really uh, test uh, all the all the sewer. And uh, yes, uh, short crate, uh, short crate concrete, uh, spread concrete is used when the structure or of the sewer is badly deteriorated with many cracks. It's also widely used in France. 30% of rehabilitation work use uh, shot crating. Uh, it is a second rehabilitation technique after grounding. Shot crating also recommend for shallow sewers and their traffic load, or for brick sewers, especially when the fabric is substantially missing. Uh, and the shot crating is uh, very often combined with uh, contact uh, grounding. Uh, Shot creating, uh, shot crate lining provides uh, tonsil resistance to the masonry, especially uh, at the crow. Uh, okay. Uh, then shot crate is usually reinforced by steel rods or steel fibers. Uh, the high modulus of the shot crate um, reduces dramatically the tonsil stress in the masonry wall due to internal hydrostructure pressure, for example, or external uh, traffic load. This is, for example, the result of a calculation uh, of the, the stress in uh, uh, an egg, uh, egg shaped masonry uh, submit to an internal uh, hydrostatic pressure. In red, it's the stress in the masonry without uh, reinforcement, without short clip lining. So the stress varies from one megapascal, it's a lot for masonry, to uh, I will say 0 0.2 uh, uh, function of the, the soil modulus. We have seen uh, that the soil modulus decrease the, the tensile stress in the masonry. Um, and in blue, it's a residual tensile stress with the short crate. So the, the short crate reduce dramatically the the, the, the tensile stress in the masonry is very efficient, and uh, in green it's uh, the the stress in the shot crate. So the the tensile stress is um, a, a transfer from the masonry to uh, the shot crate, and you you understand that the combination of shot crate lining plus uh, rounding yeah, uh, is really very very efficient to, to protect uh, to protect the, the masonry. 
Uh, and this is, uh, of course, it's possible to evaluate the, uh, the, um, the short plot lining because it's possible to to calculate the expected gain function of the thickness of the concrete lining and the and the modulus also uh, also of the concrete. So, for example, here for a thick, an expected thickness of three centimeters and a young modulus of uh, thirty thousand megapascal. It's possible to calculate the uh, expected uh, gain in, in terms of stiffness. Okay, and it's easy also to to, com to compare the, the the measured gain to the expected gain. So uh, it's another application of uh, the the math class. Um, in France. Uh, Shot rating is very often combined with contact grounding, so the combination of these two techniques is very efficient. Uh, this graph shows uh, the evolution of the global stiffness curve before uh, works in, in red, after uh, after grounding in, in green, and after shot rating in blue. So uh, the global stiffness has been multiplied by uh, almost three after. So it's it's uh, easy to judge uh, the efficiency of its uh, works, and uh, it's uh, an important application of this uh, of this test in uh, in France. So in the, I would say in conclusion, the MAC testing device is a non-destructive test uh, devoted to the mechanical assessment of main entry sewers and aqueducts. The MAC device allows a direct measurement of pipe soil system from within a buried conduit, conduct. A finite, a finite uh, based analysis of the measurement results then allows for assessment of the soundness of the pipe and the compactness of the soil. Uh, as a consequence, appropriate recommendation for pipe repair or rehabilitation can be derived. The main application are zoning, identification of zone of the structure mechanically homogeneous, and positioning of sample, uh, assessment of soil and structure conditions, nature and quality of the material we have seen, alteration voice within the structure or in the surrounding soil, and also, uh, and thirdly, firstly, uh, quality assurance, assessment of rehabilitation works, uh, soil grounding, spray concrete lining, and even uh, it's possible also to test uh, GRP lining, for example. Uh, the rate of testing is uh, from uh, 300 to 600 meters per, per day of conduit, uh, depending of on site condition, of course. It's not a slope, huh? but uh, it's better to, to clean uh, uh, to clean the the pipe for for assessment for diagnosis. Always better to clean, of course. Um, minimum din dimension for the Eau de Paris Max system it's one one point five meter, but for the IKT system it will be I think zero point eight meter. Huh? Um, the maximum dimension is four to, to five meter, and uh, an idea of the cost. It's a, uh, uh, I will say, twenty euros per met, twenty euros per per, per met. It's a, uh, I think, a, a good idea of the of the cost uh, of this uh, testing device. So, thank you very much, and I apologize for, for my. Um, my English is not very, very good. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, Olivier, for this uh, wonderful presentation. You're from Paris, and uh, there were a lot of interesting things we can talk about, I think, now. And I have also some questions here from the chat, and some who have, you can uh, ask these questions uh, directly. Um, the first is, uh, it's about, um, well, still uh, about the, the little MAC system, and uh, I'm very happy that I can introduce here uh, today uh, not only members or participants from uh, from Central Europe and from the US, but also from from the Mediterranean country, Algeria. We have with us uh, Amel Amrish from uh, Algeria and. Uh, 
She has also one question. Well, hello. Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome, <laughs> welcome. And uh, you have also Thank a question you. concerning concerning Thank the uh, the little Mac so, system. Yeah. So I want, to, I want just to ask uh, the little Mac. Uh, the diameter can be uh, at least uh, eight eight hundred centimeters uh, millimeters. But yes. Okay. So uh, the agent or operator, is it necessary to have two operators into uh, the pipe? Yeah, that's very... It's according uh, to the security of uh, agents. Mm, yes, that's a question also of the costs. And I think uh, we can uh, go to Martin Liebscher in the testing hall. He should be still there and uh, can ask him what, what he and his stuff says about... Yeah, about how, how many people have to be there, Martin? Yes. Can you share the camera? Can you hear? Can you hear me? Yeah, you can, I can hear yes, you. Can you, hear and if you share the camera. Yes, and very well. So, yeah, hey. so how many operators? Me. How many? Yeah, how many operators are needed there uh, within the sewer? Uh, normally, to to operate with the system, um, in the ideal case, you only need one, but uh, to to ensure that the the working security. You need two, two persons uh, in the sewer. Okay. Because, and one above. Uh, it, and one above, of course. One person has to stand above. And the uh, 800, is it sufficient to uh, to have two operators into the pipe? It doesn't matter. You do. You need That's two much? persons to to go in in the pipe. It will be a uh, uh, space will be very. Uh, very uh, close. <laughs> Perhaps there was a little uh, misunderstanding. Uh, it can operate uh, uh, easily. No, with with our system, uh, you can uh, go into sewers which are 1.2 meters high and 0.8 meters wide. Okay, actually. Uh, and it's very it's very uh, yeah, difficult to do work uh, in such small sewers. Yeah, this dimension okay. is difficult uh, difficult enough. Uh, 800 okay, is very, very difficult because uh, it's uh, not really accessible. And it is still a prototype. It's, uh, we haven't tested it in a real uh, situation. Oh, of course, we have tested it in real situations. Uh, we were in uh, the town of uh, Düsseldorf where we, uh, we have looked in and a sewer like this. And there we have uh, measured, and uh, also okay. the, the whole stuff was uh, calculated. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I would say the system is uh, ex it's available for testing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I believe you. Okay. Okay. So uh, uh, further questions. Take a look. Uh, one question is uh, Olivier. You're still yes. On. Yeah, you can yes, yeah, my, yeah. Yes, so yes, please yes. share the camera. Um, thank you very much, Martin and uh, Olivier. One question: um, You have shown us uh, pictures from uh, from a combination of rehabilitation and repair works. So that means uh, first grouting, then shotcrete lining. And the yes. question is: uh, uh, It seems as if shotcrete and grouting is your favorite uh, repair and rehabilitation method. Uh, are there also other methods that you have used? And that you have tested with the MAC system later, like for example CIPP lining and grouting, or, uh, or coating, simple grow coating with uh, resins or mortar. Have you used that? And have you tested it with um, MAC? Is it possible? Yes, we we have testing uh, testing uh, for uh, for example G GRP lining. It's it's possible. Uh, also. Uh, Thin uh, mortar, I would say thin mortar, one to three centimeters. It's coating, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, mm, coating, it's really too thin, I, I think. Uh, uh, we can test, uh, yes, uh, uh, straight, straight mortar, uh, uh, two or three centimeters. Uh, it's, it's possible to, to test because uh, you. you even within two two centimeters of mortars, you have a, a gain uh, of stiffness, uh, which is uh, important. Yes. So uh, 
yes, GRP aligning it's it's also possible to to test. Yes. Um, but okay, so, was, so it was not a problem that only shot creed lining can stand the test because it has a reinforcement. So it's also a non-destructive test for other repair and rehabilitation yes. methods. Yeah? Yes, okay. absolutely. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. it's, it's possible, but. Uh, Yes, GRP, I think that GRP is also an interesting application of the test because you have also a big improvement of stiffness, yes. Mm -hmm. Another question concerning the cost, you said it's about 20 euros per meter, that's not yes. too much, but what is, what is increasing the costs? When is it difficult to do it? When would you say it's, the costs are much higher? Or is 20 euros always achievable? Can you always do it for 20 euros? No, it's not always to, to 20 euros. The length of the of the sewer, of course, if you have only 50 meters to to test, or uh, 500 100 meters, will be will not be the same cost. So the uh, it's it's uh, for for example for I don't know 50 meters, uh, the cost will be double <laughs> in comparison to 500 uh, 100 meters. So the the condition or also uh, uh, and uh, I, I don't know the, perhaps also the size for example for four meters a big a big sewer it's not it's not the same price uh, than for a standard a standard uh, egg shaped sewer so of course mm -hmm. so and, but, uh, yeah. In consequence, uh, one question is also: Have you ever uh, have, did, have you ever calculated the savings? Because if you pay 20 euros, the question might be: How much do you save with regard to rehabilitation, with regard to repair? Yes. Is there a, a, a significant saving? Have you estimated this that you save more than 20 euros in rehabilitation? Yes. Costs? Yes, it, it's very. Uh, for example, the, the cost of the diagnosis it's it's uh, perhaps three percent or maximum five percent of the cost of the works. So mm -hmm. it's really uh, not very important, and uh, you can save. Uh, we have seen uh, in in the case of the um, of the the sympathetic attack the 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 cost of the rebuilt. Uh, uh, the cost of the rebuild it was uh, more than two uh, thousand uh, kilo euros, more than two million euros, and the cost of the rehabilitation uh, it was uh, the third, uh, seven hundred uh, kilo euros. So uh, the the owner of the <laughs> of the sewer has a uh, has win uh, one one point three. Uh, a kilo euro. So no, it's it's obviously it's uh, always very interesting to do uh, diagnosis. Yes, of course. Okay, a, la a last question that I have here. Uh, that's uh, you use this device to um, to ev to assess um, water pipes, water transportation pipelines, also to assess uh, sewers. Um, what about other uh, conduits, uh, structures like, for example, a pedestrian uh, crossing or a traffic crossing, if you are uh, under a railway or things like that? Have you ever used it uh, to assess such yes. Uh, structures? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, yes, under the rail railway, uh, and uh, you have many, uh, many pipes, <laughs> exactly. And uh, yes, it, it's possible uh, to to test this this kind of uh, of uh, of pipes. Of course, generally the, the length is it's short, so <laughs> the price uh, will will not be twenty euros per per meter. But we have to we have tested. Yes, maybe uh, one question. Um, at the beginning, you, you spoke about uh, your four steps in uh, the assessment of the, of the pipes uh, with the, the inner visual inspection and um, the risk-based uh, evaluation. Is there any um, time schedule for uh, re-inspecting um, pipes? So the pipe you, uh, you um, inspected yesterday, when will you inspect them again? Within 10 years, 20 years? Uh, yes. <laughs> um, 
But it, it, it depends of the yes, it depends of the result of the diagnosis. For example, if the if the pipe is red, uh, is red, uh, red, for example, uh, we will uh, or red or uh, even uh, orange. Uh, we will uh, inspect the pipe, uh, for example, in two or three three years. If the, the pipe is uh, is red green, of course, it will be ten or perhaps more. So the the duration is uh, adapt a function of the result of the of the inspection. In fact, uh, so uh, uh, yeah. how high are the forces applied uh, to the structure by the max system? And the second question. Uh, is the MAC system battery driven or uh, have you a cable uh, in, in the sewers to, uh, uh, <coughs> to drive the, the, the system? Yes. Uh, the, the, the MAC, the, the force uh, varies from... Uh, uh, I w the MAX force, it's uh, five to six tons. Uh, or we say 60 kilonewtons, okay? Um, in a, in a smaller, small sewers, for example, in a prefabricated small sewer, as, as uh, we can see uh, on the IKT lab, uh, laboratory, the, the max force will be limited to three, three tons. In fact, the max force depends on the size uh, of the of the sewer or the or the diameter of the pipe, but uh, the the max force is five to six six stones. Uh, I think it's a uh, it's a uh, good uh, and um, and uh, yes, uh, the, the trolley. Uh, Yes, the second question. Second question is: uh, we, we don't have a cable or something like that. No, the, we push uh, the the trolley in the sewer. Okay, there is a. Uh, so it's not uh, like a camera vi uh, video uh, camera. You know, it's not, uh, you don't have a, a, a cable in the. Okay. And, and the, the, the system is entirely yes, and the uh, the energy to to run the system is battery driven. Battery, battery, yes, yes. Okay. it's battery, yes. For the, yes. Okay. Thank yes, you yes. very much. Thank you. Quite good discussion and also wonderful presentations. There's a lot of experience in Paris. Thank you very much, Olivier, for your presentation. Thank you, Thank you very much. And at IKT, we are in progress with further developments. Many thanks also to Martin for the insight in our, into our laboratory. So now, before closing this meeting, let's look ahead what will happen next time on uh, 25th of November we will have an open session and uh, what does that mean? It means that everybody who wants to contribute to this webinar can do this by a short presentation and we will also have more room for discussion then. And if you want to stay in touch with our group it's easy to do so. Just join our group on LinkedIn. It's called IKT Asset Management for Underground Infrastructure. It's set up especially for the participants of this webinar. In any case, I hope we meet again during our next open session where in the webinar on 25th November. It's a Monday at the same time, 9 a.m. Eastern or 1500 Central European time. So I say goodbye to all of you and once again, still remember, maybe it's already late here in Europe, but the same sun has just been rising in California. Goodbye. <laughs>